Welcome back. Let's continue with um, our mitosis meiosis lab by thinking about the learning objectives. You're going to want to know when mitosis and meiosis occur in the life of an organism. You're going to need to be able to recognize the different stages of mitosis and meiosis with the poppet beads, but also in photos and diagrams. Um, you need to be able to identify the stages of mitosis on microscope slides of whitefish embryo or onion root tips. You're going to um, be able to need to know about differences in cytokinesis in animal cells and plant cells. And you're going to need to um, know really important concepts, phrases, words like homologous chromosomes, sister chromatids, crossing over, independent assortment, all things that you need to understand to really understand mitosis and meiosis. And your instructor may also want you to know about differences in spermatogenesis, the making of sperm, and oogenesis, the making of eggs. Um, let's step back and think about the life of a cell. Cells don't spend most of their time dividing. Um, they spend most of their time in what we call interphase. Interphase has three parts, gap one, synthesis, and gap two. Cells spend most of their time in gap one. That's where the cell is just living its life, metabolizing, growing, doing whatever it is it does. Um, if the cell gets the signal, it will leave gap one and enter the S phase or the synthesis phase. This is where the DNA is replicated and we form the sister chromatids. So in gap one, a chromosome has one chromatid, but as you can see in the diagram, after the S phase, the chromosome has two sister chromatids. Gap two, the cell makes some final preparations, and then the cell begins mitosis or meiosis. Another very, it's very important that you understand that chromosomes normally have just one chromatid. Um, it's only when a cell is going to divide that the DNA is replicated and the sister chromatids are formed. So the chromosome on the left we call an unduplicated chromosome with one chromatid. The chromosome on the right is a duplicated chromosome with two sister chromatids joined at the center mirror. Um, Again, sister chromatids only form when a cell is preparing to divide. A diploid cell has two chromosomes of each type, and students often confuse the idea of sister chromatids with homologous chromosomes. Um, each of the cells in your body, with the exception of your gametes, has a diploid number of chromosomes, or two chromosomes of each type. Um, on the left, you see homologous chromosomes as they would appear in gap one. After the S phase, when the DNA is replicated, each homologous chromosome now has two sister chromatids. Sister chromatid is an identical copy of the DNA, whereas homologous chromosomes carry the same genes, but they're not identical. That's why we're showing you the homologous chromosomes in different colors whereas sister chromatids are the same color because they're identical. Um, let me try a little bit of an analogy. Um, two students in my class, Ian and Pilar, take notes of the mitosis lecture. Um, if Ian just makes a Xerox copy of his notes, that would be like making a sister chromatid. He just has two identical copies of the same lecture. Pilar also took notes of the mitosis lecture, and so they cover the same material, but they're not identical to Ian's notes. And since you get one chromosome from each pair from each of your parents, they do carry the same genes, but they may not say exactly the same thing. It would be very difficult to work with human cells um, during our lab because we have 46 chromosomes in each of our somatic or our body cells. Um, that's a lot of chromosomes to deal with. And so instead of using a human cell, we're going to use a little demonstration cell 
that doesn't have 23 pairs of chromosomes, it has two pairs of chromosomes. It has a longer pair and a shorter pair. So, if you look at the image, you should be able to tell me if that is a cell in gap one or gap two. Um, I hope you said gap one. Here's that same cell in gap two. Here you can see that each of the chromosomes is now a duplicated chromosome with two sister chromatids. But again, we have two long ones and two short ones. Mitosis, you're going to begin with one diploid cell and you're going to end with two diploid daughter cells. Mitosis is for producing identical copies of a cell. So for humans, we use this for growth and repair. Many organisms also use it for asexual reproduction. Let's go through the stages of mitosis. Um, prophase. So the phases are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, or telophase, depending on your professor. Um, during prophase, the chromosomes are condensing. They're getting short and thick. Um, the spindle apparatus is forming with centrosomes moving to the poles and spindle fibers extending to the kinetochores. Um, and there you have it. The nuclear envelope is breaking down, etc. At metaphase, the chromosomes line up single file down the equator of the cell. Notice that the homologous chromosomes are not interacting at all. Each chromosome is just doing its own thing, lining up single file down the equator of the cell. Here you can see the spindle apparatus. Then anaphase occurs. Anaphase is where the spindle fibers contract and the sister chromatids are pulled apart. Once the sister chromatids are separated and have their own centromere, um, they are considered separate chromosomes. So, and lastly, telophase or telophase. Telophase, um, the nucleus is forming in each of the daughter cells. The nucleus the DNA is unraveling or uncondensing. It's getting long and thin again. And then in this drawing, you see cytokinesis beginning. We'll talk more about cytokinesis later, um, but it's the division of the cytoplasm that happens after the nuclear division. 